In manufacturing, it's not if, but when something goes wrong, you need to know how that company is going to handle it. Something that really should be discussed is how we really know what parts to have on hand. You get all lit up when you guys are talking about it. You're so happy that you get to support these people and the pride that you have. Working at a company, I don't, I don't know how many machine tool builders out there that can still have equipment out there a century later. Something that is a little bit unique is how we classify our spare parts. So we're using a very basic three-digit system, which is classifying spare parts, wear parts. It's classifying the criticality of the spare part. In other words, what parts are going to impact the machine performance or its ability to produce for the customer. You're completely committed to keeping everyone running uh, that chooses to work with Starring and chooses you all as a partner. It doesn't just end at the sale of the machine tool like some companies. Exactly. Today's episode is brought to you by MTD CNC, the go-to platform covering the latest stories in the world of manufacturing. In manufacturing, it's not if, but when something goes wrong, you need to know how that company is going to handle it. And in that spirit, I am here today at the Star Egg HQ, and I've got Rob and I've got Steve, and we're going to dig into how Star Egg handles service for all of the Americas, right, guys? That's right. Cool. So I know we've got some things to dig in. We're going to talk about parts because you guys have a lot of custom parts in your assemblies. We're going to talk about how you organize those, get them to the customers, and maybe a couple customer stories. So where, where should we start? What do the people out there need to know, Steve? I think something that really should be discussed is how we really know what parts to have on hand, Okay. how we prepare for that. And I think that um, inside of our company, something that is a little bit unique is how we classify our spare parts. So we're using a very basic three-digit system, which is classifying spare parts, wear parts. It's classifying the criticality of the spare part. In other words, what parts are going to impact the machine performance or its ability to produce for the customer? What parts are wear parts? What parts do you need to have on hand on a regular basis to be changing a filter or a wiper or something of this nature? So this type of classification really makes it easy for us to take spare parts that are in the most critical uh, range, which mm -hmm. we would say is at the top, the, the parts that will cause the machine to not produce if they fail, the parts which have a high likelihood of failing, and uh, and also the wear parts in their life. And so, so this is really this is really the prime, the prime. <laughs> sorry, take a deep breath. So this is really how we're identifying what parts to have on hand. So we're not stocking parts that are unnecessarily sitting on a shelf for 10, 15 years and then have to be scrapped, this type of thing. Yeah, well, and it's an important distinction to, to make. So how do you keep track of all of that then? Everything is done inside of our ERP system, which we use SAP. So it's very easy for us to automatically refill, restock. This includes the specialized unique parts for the machine that you mentioned earlier. Okay. And they're also uh, jumbled in, I guess you'd say, bunched into this classification process. So the idea behind it, of course, is that when that machine fails and we know what part we need, we can grab it off the shelf and ship it directly to the customer. So our warehouse is right here in northern Kentucky, and uh, we have a staff that's dedicated to uh, processing and shipping parts as they're needed on a daily basis. It could be a very large part that has to go in a dedicated truck or a sprinter van, and then smaller parts which are shipped with commercial, commercial uh, carriers. Awesome. So do you guys have a story of something where you were able to pull something like this off? Yes, uh, we do. A couple of cases that I think are worth noting, and Rob, uh, you could, you could uh, speak to, uh, for example, the customer which had the unexpected event from a large rainstorm and the machine flooded. What? They had their shop flood? Yeah, it was, it was really unusual. It's a very, very large uh, vertical turning center. Okay. And uh, due to the size of the machine, it's located in a, in a submerged foundation. It's submerged. It was submerged. But it's in a, a recessed foundation, which is probably about five feet deep. And a uh, customer had uh, a torrential rainstorm in the area. And uh, literally the entire, uh, the entire pit uh, foundation flooded with water. That's crazy. So how did you guys handle that? Uh, so our first step was to make sure that we got personnel on site as soon as possible and we organized with the German technicians as well as one of ours to be on site within a week. Okay. Uh, they identified that everything below the waterline had to be replaced and then from that information we could take all of that, you know, part numbers, uh, hoses, anything that was underwater had to be replaced. So oh, we wow. used our SAP system to identify all these part numbers and got that quote to them 
got them, you know, in the right direction to, yeah. you know, get their machine back running. And that, uh, that process actually starts uh, in the next week or two. That's crazy. So it's still an ongoing situation then? It is still an ongoing situation. This ha occurred about three weeks ago. Man, that's... So did, have they got it drained already or is it still underwater? Uh, they did get it drained. They got it drained that same day. And that's when we got all the information uh, oh, from good. the customer. Okay, so they were able to drain it, prevent any further damage. You guys could go in catalog, mark all the parts that you need to replace. Correct. That is crazy. So how are you guys going to be able to coordinate then the arrival of all, because I would imagine there's more than one or two parts that were below the water line. Uh, correct, there, I believe, if I remember correctly, there's over 65 to 70 different electrical parts that need to be involved. Oh, uh, motors, uh, table bearings, um, they'll be arriving in multiple shipments as the you know service progresses. Um, they arrive the you know precise time where they actually needed. That way, it's not all sitting there. Oh, so you're not just going to inundate their docks with a bunch of receiving, a bunch of skids lined up. You're actually going to time the release. Then, how do you guys keep track of that kind of thing? That sounds complicated. Uh, we, we came up with a very specific plan to have uh, German technicians on site along with ours yeah. to work side by side in different aspects of uh, the electrical and mechanical. So we knew when we needed to get the electrical parts there and the mechanical parts there. That is, that's really thoughtful for them as well, right? To make sure that the parts are there, that you can work through it in a way that makes sense. But also for the engineers on site, they don't have to dig through a bunch of random stuff. They know the only stuff that's gonna be there is the stuff they need. Are that's you correct. guys this thorough with everyone? Uh, yes, we are. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So it doesn't, it really, it really doesn't matter if it's a machine which is six months old or if it's a machine which is, which is uh, 15 years old. So that's one of the unique things I think about Sterog is our ability to support the older equipment. So the big thing also becomes uh, obsolete uh, parts. So for example, a lot of older machines delivered uh, in the late 90s or the early 2000s, the electrical motors, for example, are no longer produced. Most of them have transitioned over to high efficiency motors. These motors are a different frame size, a different physical size. So being able to adapt and provide a full, a full spare part solution to an existing customer is very important. So we're not just, we're not just saying you're on your own, you have to find something where we're not making that motor anymore. We're providing an adapter, uh, whether it be a plate or, or fittings or electrical connectors, everything that's needed in order to put the new generation component onto the existing machine. So you guys handle all of that? That's correct, yes. You're not leaving your customer to figure it out. You're not putting them in the hot seat. No. But we are, as I said before, you know, the most of most of these parts are not are not necessarily unique. So we have a lot of very common off-the-shelf parts. So customers have solutions. I mean, the spare parts list that we provide to our end users are inclusive of all the all the let's say manufacturer part numbers. So if it's a pneumatic part or a hydraulic part, of course, we're not building those parts ourselves. And um, the customer has the option if they already have that. Could be that that part is already in their stock for, for another piece of equipment or something that they need on, uh, on hand. That's, that's really thoughtful too. So you're not making them have to go through you guys for all of this either. That's correct. That's correct. Most customers do go through us yeah. simply because of the ease. And the, it's, it's a lot easier because we're, we're, providing, we're providing something that we know will work. We're mm -hmm. providing something that we know is warranted and we guarantee the part delivered to their dock. So in other words, we're not, uh, if a part arrives damaged, it's on us to repair it, replace it, and not the customer. So although all that gives the customer the ease of, uh, or the comfort of knowing that, yeah, I'm buying that part from Sterog, then I know I'm gonna have a good warranty part. Yeah, and it's not gonna be something that's crossed over wrong or discontinued, or like you said, you, you guys put all that work into making sure if it's an obsolete part that you get them everything they need to install the newer version. That's correct, that. that's correct. That's the biggest thing is what happens in 10 years. Yeah. In 10 years, a lot of these parts are, are discontinued and uh, our design department has to come up with a, with a compatible and functioning solution. Yeah, so when you're talking about all of that, I mean, the longevity, Star Egg is known in the industry for the longevity of the equipment. I mean, you guys have one in your showroom from like 1928 or something ridiculous. Right, right. And, and I was told that machine was still running until like 2017 or something wild. So right. considering all of that, what does Star Egg do to help, do, do you guys do anything as a company to help modernize older equipment then with the, the longevity that you have? Yeah, that's, a, that's another very good point. Uh, we do offer modernization solutions. I mean, you can call it a retrofit modernization. 
or or bringing a, bringing a, an older machine back to back to life to, yeah. to to live another lifetime. Rob, you have a you have an example of something we we're working on now. Don't you? Uh, yes, uh, we had a machine that was installed in 1975 okay. by one of our customers, okay. and uh, recently they explored the option of a modernization. So we worked with our factory, um, yeah. myself, one other uh, technician was there. Uh, we evaluated the machine, basically identified all the parts that needed to be redone, which was their entire control system. Their whole C-axis had to be redone, had to be uh, cut so that now their high efficiency motors could be applied. And it basically brings this 1970s machine to Cinemeric 1, taking oh, wow. it all the way up to 2025 as, you know, as high tech as it can be. Well, yeah, I mean, really, really what's, what's, what's fascinating about it is that's, is how practical that solution is versus buying a new machine. This is a very, very large machine mm -hmm. with a very complex foundation. And you can imagine if you purchase a new machine today, the cost of cutting out and building a new foundation, whereas here we're taking, a, we're taking this machine, reworking all of the large components at our facility where the machine was originally started this life, which is in, mm -hmm. in, uh, in Germany, and then basically bringing it back to a like new state. Hmm. That's crazy because that's a fifty-year-old machine, like one that is still at this state. It's still so well maintained, still such a pr production workhorse for them that they're like, "Look, can we just update the electronics?" <laughs> exactly. Um, it it was running up until we did the evaluation. They yeah. were still cutting parts. They were still very happy with the machine. They didn't yeah. want to replace it, so they that's when they explored that option to modernize it, and not just the electrical part. I mean, we're redoing even the columns. We're okay. making sure the columns are exactly precise to the factory standards. So you're resetting everything back to like factory brand new. Exactly. That's amazing. Right, right, right. Especially considering today's safety standards because that has to be done too. The machine isn't just put back to the way it was. It has to be put back to a, a current compliance state as well. That means the control safeties, the, the, the physical safeties for the operator, the yeah. All of the all of the health and safety has to be uh, brought up to today's standards as well. Does that include all the interlocks and limit switches exactly. and all that? Exactly. Kind of, oh, okay. Exactly. So you guys are. It's going to be a brand new machine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's not a. Uh, and what Rob uh, mentions is not a unique case. That's something. Uh, that's something that we we do regularly throughout uh, throughout North America, throughout the world, actually, for equipment. Because any of the any of the larger equipment, it's it's. Uh, it's definitely more practical to keep the keep the core base equipment, the core foundation. And just modernize the machine. Yeah, I really don't know something that would be a better testament to the quality that Star Aid brings to the market. If that you're reworking, and then this isn't a one-off, like you said, it's not a one-off case, but you're actually reworking all of these older machines because you did such a good job making them in the first place that they're still around 50 years later, still around like the one in your lobby, almost 100 years. That's later. correct. Well, I mean, even if you look behind <laughs> the mirror and you look at the history of yeah. uh, this, is uh, it, it, it's really, it's it's really. Uh, how can I say it's it's fun? Mm. Okay, it's really fun. It, it's it's I can't imagine doing anything else really. Talking about the longevity of your machine, guys. I mean, machine tools like cars come with a warranty when you buy them new. But you guys have machines in the field for like a hundred years. So how does Starike handle that as a company to keep your customers running? Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. What we're doing typically is is you know every customer is a little bit different, and and I would say that. Another very strong point inside of our service department is our ability to really adapt and work with all these customers to their specific needs. I mean, we have customers that will handle the care of their equipment 100% on their own, and we have other customers which, let's say, need some help, don't really have uh, in-house maintenance departments, in-house staff. So when the machine reaches the end of that manufacturer warranty, if a customer wants to continue that type of let's say cost control we have what's called service plus and this is a customizable service program which has which contains guaranteed reaction times all of the coverages you would have inside of a machine warranty and we can and usually do include predictive service inside of there so that means we're visiting the customer usually let's say four times a year and in these visits we're doing various levels of predictive maintenance. These include some corrective measures, maintenance. The whole idea behind that is to identify and pick up on anything that could possibly interrupt the production of the machine. 
And it also brings the end user, the customer, let's say, uh, a fixed operating cost where there's no surprises. Well, I mean, Service Plus sounds like a great addition, but so you're telling me that there's no difference between regular warranty and Service Plus then once they're on that plan? Effectively, yes. I mean, a Service Plus can be adapted, but uh, but at the end of the day, uh, it is it is effectively like extending the machine warranty. Okay. And so how do you guys track all of your warranty work and all your service work, and how do you keep track of all of that as a company? Well, I mean, in, initially, it all starts with the customer reaching out to us. Uh, either that be a telephone or email. I mean, we do have a we do have a twenty four seven hotline. We also have a, a a service email address which is dedicated going to a online. On, on, on. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We have an email address that people can reach out to us on, and once that email is received, Rob, you know very well what you do next. Yeah. Uh, once we receive that email, I get all the details about any you know issues that the customer may be experiencing, yeah. and from then I create a ticket. And if it's able to be, you know, remotely diagnosed, I assign a resource until you know, that process is exhausted. And if we have to, you know, be on site for an intervention, we then go to our schedule and make sure that, that customer is taken care of in a timely manner. Perfect. So it sounds like you have a great way to track it, keep it up, them up to date as well, keep communication open to keep and them. Not, I, not just that. I mean, it's it's all. Let's say we all track it by the equipment itself. Okay. Yeah. And and. It's logged into the machine's history. So when he when he creates that ticket, there's timestamps. There's timestamps when the customer reach out to us. We have timestamps when we reacted to the customer. We have timestamps when we send a quotation if it's a non-warranty case. We have timestamps when we decide to send a person, and then when that person arrives, it's 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 so automated. I really really get excited talking <laughs> about it. So even the technicians, when a technician fills out a service report. The time that he arrived at the customer is automatically entered into that ticket. The time that he leaves the customer is automatically entered into that ticket. And the nice part about that is in two years from now, uh, we can go back and look at the history, help the customer, didn't this happen once before? And we can go back and look at the history and then we can track everything, not our reaction time, how we responded to the customer. And, and this type of tracking is what really helps us improve and get better. In other words, how, how can we react better to our end users? Does it mean uh, relocating a technician to a different part of the country? Does it mean adapting our service staff? But it's it's all about it's all about getting there as quickly as we possibly can when there's a need. Yeah, and it's, it really sounds like that commitment to your customers to keep them running, to keep them making parts, keep them delivering, and keeping that uptime as high as possible. That's right. That's correct. And that's something we really pride ourselves on: is the high technical availability that our machines have in the field. And that's becoming very clear as you guys are sharing about the Service Plus, about the way that you handle all your tickets, the way that you can retrofit, that you're completely committed to keeping everyone running uh, that chooses to work with Starag and chooses you all as a partner. It doesn't just end at the sale of the machine tool like some companies. Exactly. Exactly. That's, that's the whole thing, is it does not end with the sale. That is so awesome. Well, I'm so glad, Rob, and so glad, Steve, that we could get this time to share with the people out there the, all of the work that you do that you're so passionate about. I mean, you get all lit up when you guys are talking about it. You're so happy that you get to support these people and the pride that you have. Working at a company, I don't, I don't know how many machine tool builders out there that can still have equipment out there a century later. <laughs> that is sure. so wild. Well, thank you both so you're much. Welcome. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And to everyone out there, I mean, should be clear after listening to these guys the passion that they have for the maintenance of the machine tools and everything that Starrake does as a company to keep your spindles like turning and earning we will chat to you next time thank you for listening if you want to find out more about what's happening in the world of manufacturing and engineering visit mtdcnc.com